Can we log now, Cornelia? Yes, please go ahead, Councillor Donnelly. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome everybody to today's hearing. Welcome to everybody uh, watching on the YouTube feed as well as those within the meeting. Uh, my name is Councillor Steve Donnelly. I'll be chairing the meeting today. Uh, my colleagues, Councillor Costi and Councillor Sumner, and I comprise today's subcommittee. Um, Cornelia Harding's clerk of the subcommittee, and she'll be minuting the meeting. Uh, we're also joined by Alison Luff, who's the legal advisor to the subcommittee and Sonia Francis, Senior Licensing Processing Officer, who will introduce the report. In accordance with the procedure, I'll invite the Licensing Officer to introduce the report and provide clarification on any factual issues. I'll then invite the applicant to present the application, answer any questions, and call any witnesses. I'll then invite those who've made representations or objections to make their representations, answer any questions, and call any witnesses. At the conclusion of the hearing, the subcommittee, accompanied by the legal advisor and the committee democratic services officer, will retire to consider its decision. The decision will be given at the end of the meeting, we hope approximately half past 12, and confirmed in writing within five working days. In the unlikely event the panel can't reach a decision today, you'll be notified in writing within five working days of the panel's decision. I hope all that is clear. I know some of you will have um, attended such meetings in the past. So uh, first of all, welcome everybody. So if I can ask everybody here to introduce themselves and perhaps um, if I just run through um, in the order that I see people uh, on my participants list, um, uh, Mimi, can you introduce yourself, please? Good morning, everyone. Uh, Mimi Stuber from the Noise and Nuisance team of Ealing Council. Thank you. And uh, Peter? Good morning, Peter, the, uh, the Cavalier Licence Order. Thank you. Uh, Sonia? Uh, Sonia Francis, uh, Senior Licensing Processing Officer, Ealing Council. And thank you. Uh, Alison is there, but is keeping a camera off for bandwidth reasons. So if you say hello, Alison. Good morning, all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, then I've got my two colleagues, Councillor Sumner. He definitely said good morning. Uh, and Councillor Costigan. No, she's muted. That's better. Good morning, Deirdre Costigan uh, from North Holt Mandeville Ward. Thank you. Uh, could you rename? Oh, you, you have. You've been renamed. Brilliant. Um, now, uh, yeah. Luke, Luke, Elf yeah, sorry, Kerry. Sorry, Chair. Um, I'd just like to introduce myself. I'm speaking yeah. on behalf of Vicky. She's currently busy doing a summer review application, so I'm just um, standing in for her today. I'm oh, that's a right. I'm officer. Yeah, your name had shot up to the top of my list, so I would have, I would not, I would never have missed you out. Never have missed Bye. you out. Thank you. Uh, and I've got Luke Elford. Yes, good morning, councillors. Luke Elford from Woods Were on behalf of the premises licence holder. It's fine. My, my cunning plan to use the participants list is ruined by the fact that people's names are moving up and down the list. But I think... Um, and Cornelia, you're the last. Good morning, all. Cornelia Harding, Democratic Services Officer. That's great. So I think we've now heard uh, from everyone. Um, so I've explained the procedure. Um, and I will now ask uh, Sonia Francis to introduce the application. Uh, as the licensing officer. Thank you, Mr Chair. Mr Patrick Perjergi made an, an application to vary a premises licence in relation to Cavalieri for the MAL, Ealing, London, W5, 2PJ. Two representations have been received. These are as follows. One, the Metropolitan Police Service. Two, Ealing Council Noise and Nuisance Team. Sorry about that. 
Okay, but so, so these things are always a good reminder to to the rest of us to, to mute our devices. That's right. Carry on, please. Yeah. Sorry, Sorry about that. Uh, the nature of the proposed variation are as follows. One, to extend the liceable area to cover a terrace to the rear of the premises. Two, to add conditions to the premises license in respect of the new area. Three, to amend relevant conditions of the premises license in relation to the new area. The hours the licensable activities and any non-standard timings permitted by the premises license will not change as a result of this application. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I'll now invite uh, the applicant to present the application. I think Ms. Mr. Alford, you'll be doing that. Yes, thank you, Chair. Good morning, councillors and officers. Uh, just, just very briefly again to introduce myself, I'm Luke Elford from Woods Worm, a licensing solicitor representing Mr. Pope Jergy, who is the premises license holder at Cavalieri. You, you've heard your licensing officer's report, uh, and, and I, don't, I won't take too long, but I hope to just be able to add some colour to the application for you. Can I just check very briefly that you've read and received, or received and read rather, my case summary and the supporting documents that we submitted. I can see Councillor Costigan nodding. The, uh, we have indeed. Thank you very much. Uh, Cavalieri is a very small bar uh, with very limited space and it's located uh, on the Mall. You may have been there, you, you may have not. Um, it, it's been trading for a few years, notwithstanding um, obviously last year's debacle running into this year. Um, it benefits from a premises license and you can see copy of that premises license at page 23 of your agenda papers onwards. It's quite a late license um, and you'll see the hours on there. Um, currently the premises license only covers the, the envelope of the building but there is a there is a rear yard behind the bar. Uh, it's pretty run down, um, very uneven flooring. It, it looked to me when I saw it as though there may have been an extension out there at some point. Uh, but that would have been knocked down and, and, and just left. It's effectively scrub land. Uh, the owner, Mr. Pergergi, would like to do uh, something nice with it and, and has agreed a deal with his landlord in, in order to do that. Um, Mr. Pergergi has, has always intended to do something with this land. Uh, the question was has always been what he was going to do rather than when he was going to do it. Given that the premises has been closed for, for some time, this has rather accelerated his plans. In terms of what we're looking to do, um, Mr. Pergergi obtained planning permission from uh, your planning uh, department for a very smart iron and glass extension uh, that covers this area to the rear of the premises uh, that features a, a retractable roof. Um, the noise angle of the use of this premises was looked at by your planners, as was how the premises was to be constructed, and that was all within the planning permission. And you can see a copy of the planning permission as we've included it within our, our submissions. This extension is going to cost Mr. Pergergi somewhere in the region of £85,000, which I hope you will agree is a significant investment in this business and in Ealing generally particularly given the current circumstances. It's being imported uh, from abroad uh, and it's going to be built and constructed to an extremely high standard. We have supplied you with um, some artist's impressions uh, of the finished article uh, and also a similar scheme that is being constructed elsewhere. Naturally, we can't supply you with, with photographs of our extension because it hasn't been built yet. Um, Central to this extension is a retractable roof that's going to allow the feeling of being outside uh, without actually being outside and, and will obviously keep customers uh, cosy and, and noise in when, when the roof is closed. Uh, we've never intended this area to be uh, part of the bar in the sense that we wanted to run it until 
2.30 a.m. or 2 a.m. Uh, we've always been mindful of the residents above us. And that's why we have only applied to use this area until 11 p.m. rather than 2.30, which is what the business allowed. And I think we've been vindicated in that approach. We've been sensitive because there are no resident objections to this application. There's no objections from any resident or any business. The other reason that we're creating uh, this, this uh, extension is it allows us to take our smokers who are currently, uh, who currently use the front of the premises uh, on the mall itself uh, as a smoking area. And it allows us to bring them back through the premises to the very rear, closest to the, the train tracks, uh, which operate 24 hours a day. And we think that is a, a huge benefit. We, we genuinely thought that this would be supported uh, by the police and by environmental health. Um, the application has received a, a couple of objections, as you've heard, none from residents. And, and we're somewhat disheartened uh, by the objections. Um, first of all, we, we did send a copy of this application to both the police and environmental health before it was ever submitted. And we received no response to uh, that pre-application dialogue. And that lack of response has been a bit of a theme throughout um, uh, this, the application process. We, we submitted the application, not having heard back from the police or environmental health. And we received no contact at all about the application until the very last day of the consultation period uh, from the police when we received a query um, about how many seats there would be uh, in, in the rear area and we responded. There was nothing in the original police uh, email that said anything about the hours that we were seeking. The police then wrote back and asked us to close the outdoor area at, at 10 p.m. and we, we, we responded you know very gently and we said this is, this is not an outdoor area, it's a, it's a structure, it has an openable roof, but it is enclosed, as in, 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 in accordance with the smoking legislation, you wouldn't be able to smoke in this area. There is a little smoking area further back that, that you would be. Um, we didn't hear anything back, and, and there has, in our view, been a bit of a fundamental misunderstanding as, as to what this application entails. Um, and, and the police uh, objection seems to suggest that all of the licensing objectives would be undermined. And we think that may be a mistake um, because clearly the, the only potential uh, one that's mentioned is the prevention of public nuisance. And I'd just like councillors to be mindful of, of paragraph 9.12 of the section 182 guidance which says that it's incumbent on all responsible authorities to ensure that their representations can withstand the scrutiny of a hearing. We've tried to engage uh, with the police and with the environmental health officer subsequent to the consultation period. Uh, we've provided lots of, of, of chases, lots of prompts. Uh, we've had a bit of response from the police, but nothing from environmental health at all. We've repeatedly pointed out that this is not an open area, it's a structure. We've offered a compromise, which we think deals with the concerns of the officers, and we put that same compromise to you in the context of the, your decision. And that is that we will ensure that the roof of this external area that is retractable is kept closed from 10 p.m. every day. Um, we're not in a position where we can say to you, yes, we're happy to accept a, a terminal hour for the use of this area completely as 10 p.m., as that would would, uh, would make the project unviable in, in our view. And we've also looked at, at the uh, premises license in terms of other conditions, and 11 p.m. seems to be the witching hour for those conditions. We don't really see why this should be any different. Um, the premises license itself, if you if you have a look at it, contains a lot of conditions, and, uh, and there are a lot of conditions that deal uh, with the prevention of public notices um, in terms of our use of SIA door supervisors, notices, and so on. The police and environmental health 
did ask us if we would agree to limit the number of smokers outside. And we said, of course, we're happy to agree um, the number of smokers uh, that, that was requested by uh, the police and environmental health. And indeed, we'd already offered that smokers wouldn't be allowed to take drinks out with them, thus reducing their, their dwell time and encouraging them to come back in. Um, the hours that we have applied for for this area are actually less than are envisaged uh, by the core hours policy within your statement of licensing policy. Um, the premises license holder is extremely proactive. Um, he has a very good relationship with his neighbours uh, and close businesses. Um, and, you know, there have been no issues from our perspective in terms of the way we've run this business previously. We foresee no issues moving forwards, even with this additional area. We've engaged with our neighbours um, in the context of making this application. And as I said earlier, this has um, paid off in the sense that there are no objections from uh, local residents or local businesses. And I know from making previous applications at this site that there are very, very active residents associations in that area. Um, there doesn't seem to us to be a great deal of evidence to support the conclusions that have been reached in respect of these representations. Um, we could understand the, the officer's stance if there was a long history of noise complaints attributable to the premises uh, or public nuisance issues to do with the clientele, but there's nothing in respect of either of those matters in, in either of the objections. And paragraph 9.43, of the section 182 guidance says councillors that there needs to be evidence for you to base your decision upon and there is no uh, evidence here um, we, we kindly ask that you grant this application as we've applied for but with the modified condition that the roof be closed after 10 p.m we've highlighted for you the positive benefits of the application in terms of uh, us moving our smokers creating a very nice area for our customers and the residents of Ely and indeed the investment itself. Um, happy to take any questions that you may have um, about the, the application if you think there's anything that I haven't covered and of course I welcome the, the chance to, to respond to anything that, that is said by in, in relation to the representations but I just want to leave you with this. If we can run a bar until 2.30 a.m. beneath residents without causing problems, how is it that we could not run this area until 11 p.m. and do the same? I, we just don't understand. And, I, and I'll leave you with that. Thank you, councillors. Thank you, Mr. Alford. Um, so I'll now take questions to Mr. Alford. Obviously, uh, the be an opportunity for the police and the noise and nuisance officer to make their own um, case later, but at the moment we're dealing with questions. So, um, PC Smart, if I can start with you, questions to Mr. Elford. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, can you just point out within the original application where it's mentioned about this retractable roof? Whereabouts in the application, in the original application, was it mentioned? It, it doesn't, but it's been pointed out many times since. So the retractable roof wasn't stated in the original application, was it? No. Okay. So, and is there any other supporting documents um, mentioning the retractable roof? Yes, it, it's in our, it's in all of our supporting documents. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. And uh, Mimi Stupu? Thank you, Chair. Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, with regards to the planning application, um, the same, it's been mentioned that the, um, the planning application has been granted, and I'm aware it has been granted, but I'd like to um, inquire if the planning application, in, in the planning application, was it mentioned that it has a retractable roof? Yes, that's because part of the application. Sorry? Mr. Alford yes, said that was part of the planning application. That's part of the application and, and the planning application. Because I have, 
I have liaised with the planning team and with a consultant that had concerns with regards to to this area and regards to ventilation. Um, and I understand there was no mention about the retractable roof. And Sorry. if I Sorry, apologies, this seems to be new evidence that is being produced at the hearing. Miss Alford, I'll, we'll keep it simple for the moment. You've been asked whether or not the retractable roof was a feature of the planning application and therefore I guess the planning permission that was granted your response is to say that it was yes yes okay um I'm not sure well I mean do you well you have your own opportunity to give evidence uh, later but Perhaps if you can, indi I guess it's difficult to draw someone's attention to something that's not there, if indeed it were not to be there. But I, I guess the committee will have the opportunity to, to, to see if you believe that that's relevant to, to the case. Uh, you have further questions? Uh, sorry, Jerry, talking to Matt. I am, yes. Oh, you, um, you still, you still I have, yeah. Can I add a few more with regards to the planning permission? If if I can't, if I'm not well, allowed to, ask, then no. well, you can ask questions at this stage. You can't make okay. points. Okay, I understand. Yeah. Um, no, because what what my colleague um, um what PC Smart said earlier is the same that we haven't we haven't been made aware um, at the beginning of this application that this um, structure has a retractable roof. Um, it only came, um, this information was provided with, to us when um, Vicky engaged um, with the applicant and it was confirmed last minute that it has a new retractable roof. We weren't aware and that's why we raised concerns with regards to, to the area. Okay, I, um, I, I don't understand. Have I, I, get, I don't I guess have any questions from, from the yeah. panel's point, I guess from the panel's <laughs> point of view, we were made aware some days ago about it. So I, I guess what we're interested in knowing is whether or not it makes substantive difference to the objections that the police and the noise and nuisance team um, have made. But I guess we'll have the opportunity to hear that when it when it comes to your own representations. So I'll go to the the, the panel councillors uh, now. So uh, Councillor Costigan. Thanks, Chair. Um, it was just to get an understanding of the, the geography of it uh, again, um, uh, Mr. Alford. Uh, I think it was very helpful. We did get the uh, artist's impression um, prior to the meeting. Um, so I have had the opportunity to look at that um, and that has clarified the actual structure. But in terms of the smoking area, you said it's um, closer to the railway. Um, so I'm assuming that you're saying therefore less kind of residential disturbance. But where exactly is it sited in relation to the premises? And presumably, I'm guessing there's flats above um, the premises. Um, how close is it still to the kind of the, the back of those flats? Yes, uh, sure. Because and sorry, just it, it's it to do with a, a similar um, question. You the 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 license currently uh, is um, five up to five smokers can be outside the front of the building. Um, so I think now it's it's for 10 smokers to be outside the back. Is that correct? And was there any reason why you felt there was a need to to double those numbers outside just in terms of the potential noise nuisance if there, if if that is the case um, for the back of those flats? Thank you. Sure, thank you. I'll, I'll deal with those one at a time, if I may. Um, first of all, councillors, if you turn to page 33 of your agenda papers, I take it is the fire I, that's a fire alarm somewhere. That's what <laughs> Thank you. We don't always do this to uh, applicants, Mr. Old, but I assure you. Carry yeah, on. That's, that's okay. Um, no problem at all. So if you turn to page 33, uh, maybe page 27, the numbering is, is slightly different. I think page 33 of 48, there's a couple of different numbers on there. Well, plan if, if you use that, there's a, there's a there's a manual annotation in the bottom right hand corner of each page. So if you refer so to that, that, that that's the standard that that brings together all the different sub documents. So, sure. 
So page 27, please. Page 27. Yep. Cavalieri Variation March 2021 licensing plan and drawing on top. Yep. The smoking area uh, currently is at the very front of um, the, the premises where you can see those two tables just above where it says Cavalieri Variation Plan. Um, sorry, excuse, excuse me one second. They say never work with children or animals. I have an interloper who is trying to get into the call. Please bear with me two seconds. Apologies, it's, it's been some time since I've had to see someone ejected from a licensing subcommittee. <laughs> That's all right. We, we wouldn't want to go viral, Mr. Alford. <laughs> no. <laughs> Carry um, on. So, so the, the, the smoking area will be at the very back, the very top of the plan, adjacent to the, the line there. And it, that will be open to the air. The terrace structure will finish slightly before that. And there'll be a small area there where customers will be able to smoke that's open to the air. Customers wouldn't be able to smoke in the terrace area itself because the way the smoking legislation works, if you have a retractable roof, it, it's treated as being closed all of the time. So the, the smoking area is, is at the very back of the premises. And perhaps if you turn to page 31, You can see there. There's a there's quite a good sort of ordnance survey map that shows that the, the smokers will be located as close to the uh, train tracks whilst on our property um, as possible, and they will be kept enclosed there. In terms of the the second question regarding the number of smokers, the condition that is currently on the premises license, and I'll just look it up. Hmm. So it's a, it's a slightly different condition, councillor. It's, it's, a, it's a last entry condition but says that we can have five customers uh, permitted to temporarily leave the premises to smoke um, after 90 minutes prior to the, the premises closing. Um, I don't know if you've seen the front of the premises, but it's, it's a pretty narrow walkway. Um, the smoking area that we're constructing at the rear is bigger um, and would be able to uh, able to accommodate more people. But in actual fact, the request for 10 persons came from uh, the police rather than from us. We, we didn't suggest a number. We would just control it to make sure that the area didn't become overcrowded. Chair, could I just ask for clarification just on the map? Is that okay? Yes, of course. Yep. Um, yep, that's really helpful. I'm just looking at that map then on page uh 31 and i have to say uh, I, i'm sure it's not any fault of of your own but the maps are very difficult to read um and the uh the 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 map of the rear of the premises is not very easy to to read online and of course we're all using online copies now uh it's, it's quite difficult but this map with the railway behind um i'm just wondering there's there's a premises to the left called 1a um i mean is that is that like a flat or residential, which seems quite close to where I'm assuming, you know, if it's right at the end of the black area, um, then is that quite close to 1A? You know, I'm just trying to understand how far um, from residential properties is this smoking area? Yes, in, in terms of the, the residential properties, the nearest residential properties would be um, above us, directly above us or to the side of us. Uh, as far as we're aware, um, and, and Patrick will be able to confirm, um, 
we don't think 1A is a residential property. I think it's part of a, a business or a yard. Petrick, would you mind just confirming to the councillors uh, what the situation is regarding 1A? I, I don't think there is a residence there from when I've been to visit the premises. You're muted. Hi there. Um, I think 1A, one, one it doesn't seem it's not a residential. The I believe the closest um, the closest residential to the smoking area would be the flats above the building, and they're about fifteen meters distance from Thank where you. the smoking area is now. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Sumner. No questions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I mean, just following up a couple of those points. I mean, just that I know from long experience that the the gap between what's marked on page thirty one between the bank and the surgery is a very narrow passageway, which has been um, been navigated by minicabs for as as long as I can remember, um, extremely skillfully, because I I. I there never seems to be quite a big enough gap for them to get up and down there. So it, I, I don't know whether that's where the minicab office is at the back. Um, but just following on, um, just looking at your additional document that's in the agenda, uh, numbered five, um, which has a series of um, plans, there's three elevation, there's elevations and plans from different angles. Um, now, I'm not sure quite in terms of the scale of, of the rear, we've been provided, I think, in document number three with some illustrations of what these the extension would look like. I think uh, yours, in terms of the plan, is orientated, I think, to 90 degrees to most of those illustrations in that it, 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 it extends long ways rather than width ways. Um, but purport, looking at the bottom of the three illustrations, the bottom right side elevation as proposed, is I take it that's proportionate. That's a proportionate picture of the rear of the premises. So is the bit at the extreme left what looks potentially like a fence, little fence? Is that the dimensions of the smoking area um, that remains once? the extension has been built? Yes, it is, councillors. That's where the smoking area will be. It's, it's about in equivalent size to two car parking spaces parked vertically up towards the, the premises. That's fine. Thanks. I mean, it's just building on Councillor Costigan's point. I think we're just trying to explore because there's the difference between, uh, you know, any number of people outside on a busy main road, which the mall is at, at much of the day, and people in a secluded area around the back, because clearly trains aren't going backwards and forwards. So just trying to establish the extent to which that area would be secluded from, from neighbours. So I think, I think that's... Um, that's the key thing that we're, we're trying to establish here. But thank you. That's been helpful. That's that's all from me. Chair, could I just um, yeah, just a, a, a further question on that? Um, I think that you said, Mr. Alfred, um, that um, there was plans for the smoking area to make it nice and etc. Um, so I'm I'm just wondering, like, is there a possibility that it might become too nice? And even though you can't bring alcohol out there, um, that you might have groups of ten people sitting around, um, and, and that becomes the kind of fun place to be um, in the restaurant. Um, I've not been in it myself. I've passed by actually, looked in the window, and thought it looked like a fun place to be. Um, so I may go to it in the future. Who knows? Um, but I'm just you know wondering how attractive that area might become, and might it actually um, um, be an area that people wanted to hang out in for longer periods. And, and maybe before you answer, if I can just build on that, um, I guess there are going to be evenings when uh, the premises are very busy, premises where they're going to, and evenings where they're going to be less busy, a sort of quiet Monday night. How will the numbers at the back be monitored? 
because I, I can see that on a busy evening it might become almost self-regulating because if there were 10 and there was a, a queue of smokers waiting for people to get out to make way but there might on a quiet evening you know there might be no, no there might be no pressure to move on as it were so how would the management of the premises seek to regulate the the flow in and out of the smoking area thanks both both very fair questions i'll, I'll start with councillor costigan's uh question the trick with smoking areas is not to make them so comfortable that people don't come back into the premises and spend any money. Um, we're not going to have seating in the smoking area. It's literally a place for people to go, stand, smoke their cigarettes and come back inside. You're completely right. If we made it too comfortable, it would end up being an additional customer area uh, for people to use for licensed activities. And that's not what we want. Um, so we're not installing any seating in the smoking area, but we will make it uh, secure enough and cosy enough that, that people feel protected from the elements while still being able to smoke there. In terms of the, the subsequent question from, from Councillor Donnelly about how it will be managed, um, the smoking area is going to be monitored by our CCTV system. Um, it's also going to be monitored by staff. On our busy evenings, we employ SIA uh, door supervisors, and it's anticipated that between the SIA door supervisors and our staff, they would be the ones who would monitor the flow to the smoking area. Now, it's important to remember that we are talking about smokers after this terrace area closes. So that would be controlled at the back door of the premises. And obviously, they would keep an eye on the, on the smoking area as well. Um, we're not wedded to the figure of 10 people. 10 people is about... 10% of our capacity, give or take. But if it was felt that there needed to be less smokers in that area after 11 p.m., um, we'd be happy with that. The main thing that we're concerned about from a business perspective is being able to use the enclosed terrace area until 11 p.m. rather than 10 p.m., which is what the police and environmental health have, have said we should. Thank you very much. Okay. I and thank you for your uh, presentation. I'll now move on to the um, presentations by representation by the responsible authorities, uh, beginning with the police. So uh, PC Kerry Smart, if I can ask you to make your representation, please. Hi Chair, thank you very much. Um, Chair, I'd just like to go over a couple of things. The, um, Mr. Alfred said that we haven't had um, much communication with the applicant. I'd just like to um, cover that. With over the last couple of months or so, the police have been inundated with numerous applications um, and many hearings. So obviously between two of us trying to cover everything that's going on within the borough and all the applications, we obviously deal with the applications as they come in and as soon as practicable for us to do it. Um, the original application came in and it didn't state the retract about the retractable roof. I understand that uh, PC Vicky Hewison contacted the applicant um, or Mr Il Elford on the 14th of April in relation to the application itself because um, it was coming to uh, the end date of consultation and it, even on, in that uh, conversation there was no discussion about a retractable roof. Um, I think on the 15th of April when Vicky um, spoke to uh, Mr. Alfred again, questioning a few points, it was then discussed about a retractable roof. Um, now, the representation has gone in by police. Um, as it's been stated before, there are residents above. Um, the noise emanating from the premise um, will emanate from the premise and we believe that 11 2300 hours is late um, we believe that 10 o'clock would be more proportionate um, they've also uh, we've also addressed the um apologies i'm just going through the representation uh, to cover the conditions proposed within the application. Again, we believe that 10 o'clock is proportionate. 
Um, and um, within uh, which will promote the licensing objectives. Um, bear with me. And again, the smokers outside until 10 at 10 p.m. Um, the revised conditions. I, I don't. If, I believe that you've read Vicky's um, representation. There's uh, conditions within that that we believe are proportionate. Um, again, it's for 10 p.m. and not 2300 hours. Um, yes, it's in that within a busy high street, but we have the residents above the premise, which we believe 11 o'clock would still be late um, and have an impact on the residents. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I move to questions. Um, Mr. Elford. Yes, just one question. Um, you said in your in your presentation that uh, PC Hewison wasn't informed until after the last date for representations that this was a, a structure. Um, I haven't included all of the emails to and fro with, with PC Hewis, and I'm sure the councillors don't need to see all of them. Um, but have you seen my email of the 14th, where I tell PC Hewis that it is a, a structure and explain that it is indoors, not outdoors? You're on mute, PC Smart. Apologies, I've just, um, Vicky's just sent me lots of emails through in relation to the communications that she's had. So just bear with me and I'll just have a look at the... Uh... Well, it, it, it is for the, uh, it, it's additional meeting document four oh. of your agenda. Sorry, Councillor, all, all I wanted to do is just correct the misconception that we hadn't told the police that this was an enclosed area. We did categorically. Okay, I believe that that the this information has come through once a representation was submitted. Is that correct? No. Okay. So I think Mr. Elford's drawn our attention to an email he sent to PC Hewison on the fifteenth of April, which, is, as I said, is additional document four on our agenda. It does make reference to the retractable roof. Okay. It's fine. I'm sorry, Councillor. This was this, an email that I haven't included in the papers because, as I said, I didn't want to burden you with everything. No, but it it was it it, it is, it's however, possible. part of the papers because it's part of the additional documentation that was submitted to councillors on the 29th no, of, I, 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 of, I of April, really and, and is part of is part of the table. The I'm just for anybody. I'm, I'm not sure if anybody is watching on YouTube, but if anybody is, I'm referring them to the document that that within the published agenda that we are currently talking about, which is additional document four. Yeah, Chair, so I was under the impression that the retractable roof wasn't mentioned until the representation um, had been submitted. That's not so correct. I stand corrected if that's... That's not okay. correct. There's, there's an email from me to PC Hewison on the 14th of April, which is the last day for objections, before her objection was received, that says this is a... An, an enclosed structure. Look, it, it's not the That's fine. In, that's fine. I was under the impression okay. it was after, but that's fine. Okay. okay. Well, we're referring to the 15th of April, are we, Mr. Elford? You said the 14th there. No, the 14th. I, I 14th. sent an email on the 14th. Confirmed. Okay. Well, I'm looking at an email from the 15th, which is yeah, the one I'm referring to. don't have this email in your papers, but it was. Okay. I'm with you. I'm with you. Any further questions, Mr. Elford? No, no questions from me, Chair. Okay, um, I'll switch the order. Councillor Sumner? No questions, thank you, Chair. Councillor Costigan? No further questions. Uh, yeah, well, if I can explore a bit, because um, I appreciate uh, PC Smart, you're assimilating information there. But in my head, there are three things we're trying to establish. What What's an acceptable way to proceed in an area of the building which is open, what's the acceptable way to proceed for an area of the building which then is covered? And what's the acceptable way to proceed for the area of the building which is beyond that 
which is open at all times um, and is used by smokers. Um, well, the police so, believe, am I mute? No. Uh, the police believe that um, a 10 o'clock cutoff point um, for the uh, smoking area is proportionate. Um, and for the, the terrace area um, is proportionate as well, because we don't know when the retractable roof is going to be open and not open. So I think to have the 10 o'clock um, permitted on the outside area or on the terrace area is proportionate. Um, so even if it's not, you're still going to get noise from the terrace area, even when there is going to, when the roof's going to be on, because they may have windows open. And so the police bullet strongly believe that 10 o'clock is proportionate and um, enough for the licensing objectives to be promoted. OK, well, actually, I was going to come to that in a minute because Mr. Olford made reference to the fact that you ticked all four licensing objectives as being covered. And I, I, like him, I'm not quite clear where the where all four come from. But I can see Mr. Olford, his hand is up, but if I can perhaps anticipate him say that in this letter of the 50 email of the 15th of April which I'm still looking at um he asks PC Hewison if we were to agree that the retractable roof of the external roof terrace will be kept closed after 2200 hours daily mm. and that no more than 10 smokers will use the smoking area after 2200 and our other conditions as opposed amended as necessary, would that be acceptable to you on the basis the terrace would be enclosed after 2200? So your question of we don't know when the terrace roof would be closed would be moot in that point because it would the offer's been made to make that a condition. So I guess what I'm trying to explore is at this, why, why is that to this point not acceptable to the police? Chair, what page is that on, please? Well, this, this is, with, in terms of the, this is one of the additional meeting documents. It's additional meeting document number four, email from Mr. Elford to PC Hewison on the 15th of April, begins, dear, but, oh, uh, and to, uh, and to uh, Mimi Stupu. Um, I was wondering why it said dear both, but that's why. Dear both, hope this finds you well is how it begins. So obviously this is a question that I would I would I would ask Mimi as well. Now I, I had information that we need to pause the meeting shortly. Uh, Cornelia, can you update us, please? Yes, the, the reason is that the legal advisor to the subcommittee is being asked to restart her computer and it will restart yeah. automatically. That's the reason why I believe she, she, she's she been logged out. Okay, well, perhaps we'd better pause until she's come back, which give you an opportunity, an excellent opportunity for you to run through and, and find these documents, um, PC Smart. Yeah, I'm just trying to find them now, thank you. What page is it on, Chair? Well, I say they are, it, I'm looking at, the, if you go to the council website, and it, so it's not in the original bundle of documents, these were additional documents, um, and you can find them, if you go to the meetings programme on the council website, um, and you select this meeting, then at the bottom of the page, below the, um, the existing documents, there is a, there are a list of additional meeting documents. Um, cover sheet, case summary, artist impressions, email to police, drawing to police, email to police, and planning permission. And these are documents which the panels had since the 29th of April, which is Thursday of last week. Okay, I'll try and look at them. Thank you. Chair, should I pause the live stream now? Uh, if you if you believe that's appropriate, or would you just hang on till uh, Alison might rejoin shortly? Yeah, I think I've had this happen to me. I think during a council meeting where my computer simply decided to reboot. Um, very secure. 
perils of modern technology, councillors. Indeed. I can't imagine any of you switching off mid-meeting to reboot yourselves if we were all in the same no. room together. But um, one of the perils of the Microsoft Surface is that the off switch is right next to the volume control. So on more than one occasion, I've hit the one when I was thinking of it and the other. <laughs> and one of the benefits of using Zoom for these meetings as opposed to Teams Live, which we used at one point, is that it's much easier to access them from a range of devices. Yes, um, th there seems to be, I mean, obviously I appear before lots of councils up and down the country, um, and, and there seems to be a, a real range of, of things, uh, solutions that are being used. Zoom and Teams are the most common, but I've also seen Google Meet. Um, I don't know if it's still called Google Meet or it's just called Hangouts now or, or something like that. Um, uh, right down to, to the uh, very basic telephone conferencing where everyone just dials in and it's all done over the phone. Goodness. Yeah, that is, that, that is I have to say, that is challenging. That is old school. Yeah, you, you like to be at least, you know, um, obviously my preference as, as an advocate is to be in the same room as people, but at least to be able to see people is, is very useful. Um, I know from, from telephone conferences that I've been on, it, it's incredibly difficult to read your room when you can... You can't see people's facial expressions. Maybe. Well, I don't think the dignity of local government would would suit something called hangout. I think <laughs> I think it would have to have a much posher name than that. Absolutely. Yes. Um, Any news from um, Alison Cornelia? Yes, Chair. Just to. I'm asked. I'm asking her. Do you, does she have an estimate as to how long it would take, or, or another device that she can join us on, or can she join by phone, perhaps, maybe? Any, any device for Zoom, really. It de depends uh, whether uh, her machine's trying to install um, uh, e updates yeah. or the like. Yes, that's what she says. It's doing a Windows update. Well, if, she, can, her, if she got Zoom on her phone or something, if she can, yes, I'll ask her. Any, any device. It's apologies for, for this, but I think it's you know, always difficult to proceed without one's legal advisor. No, I've, I've once upon a time I, I sat in Alison's shoes at another local authority, so so I, uh, I I'm, I'm fully aware of the, her need to be here. Yeah. Just to say, um, Chair, that she's trying to join back in. Excellent. Thank you very much.
I have Alison back on my screen. I don't know if you do. Yeah, too. I'm not. Can you hear us, Alison? Not sure she's fully with us yet. Alison, can you hear us? Uh, yes, I'm back. Apologies. I did do a, a complete reboot yesterday and it's it still wants me to reboot today. So log me up. Sorry. I'm back. <laughs> okay. Um, so just to recap, um, before you, well, I'm not quite sure exactly when you, you left us, but I, I'd asked PC Smart series of questions really relating to the email from Mr. Elford to PC Hewison and Mimi Stupu on the 15th of April, which is document number four in the additional documents um, around the issue of the retractable roof and, and in general, uh, seeking to understand what the police consider acceptable with the roof retracted, what the police consider acceptable with the roof extended and what the police consider acceptable for the area beyond the terrace i.e the smoking area um and uh, seeing there was some confusion as to whether or not all these documents had been seen and considered so pc smart if you have the chance to um consider these points yes thank you chair um i've read the uh the email um that was sent through my only concern with the retractable roof is about soundproofing. Um, in, is it going to be soundproof? What sort of material is the roof going to be? So when when they when it's closed after um, ten o'clock, what sort of noise is going to be coming from the uh, from the premise itself? Is the the roof going to be soundproofed? That's okay. Well, thanks. So we sort of flipped around a bit to what would have been a question from PC Smart to you uh, earlier, Mr. Olford, but for the purposes of, of, of expediting the discussion, can you help us out there? Sure, yes, the, the area is soundproof. The roof is, is, is designed to keep noise in, um, and also the planning permission requires that the noise is insulated to a certain level uh, as part of the planning permission. This was all considered under the planning. Unfortunately, I wasn't involved in that process um, but um, it, it's been it's been approved in terms of planning, and it is soundproof. Well, certainly, if I can be able to try to build condition number four in the planning permission relates to noise levels arising from the use of the building and the sound insulation of the building envelope, including any mitigation measures, shall be in accordance with standards of the council's SPG ten and criteria of VS eight two three three colon twenty fourteen at the nearest and most effective, affected noise sensitive premises, including private external amenity spaces. That's the one. I don't know if that's helpful, PC Smart. Thank you, Chair. Um, so yeah, I mean, as long as the um, the roof is soundproof, then I don't, the, from reading that email, the police do not have an issue with what has been proposed within that email. Thank you. Um, so, moving on then to the noise and nuisance officer, Mimi. You're on mute still. Uh, apologies, I'm just trying to find a document and I'm struggling. Um, as, I, as I said in my representation, my concern would be the external area and also the smoking area. Um, I would like to see clarifications with regards to the smoking area, not necessarily to see clarification, but when we had the um, initial planning up, oh, sorry, initial uh, premises license application, we've raised concerns about the smoking area um, being at the front of the premises and not the rear because of, of residents um, having the bedrooms facing the rear of the or, of that parade of shops. And that was, the, that was our, our reasoning um, previously. Um, and I am still concerned with regards to the smoking area at the rear and also looking at the application, they, the applicant suggested a condition with regards to 
apologies, I'm trying to find the page on the back to make reference. It's just my system is. Um, there is, uh, bear me for one second. Page 36, um, it states, apologies, sir, apologies, apologies, I've lost it. Yes, page 36. From, from 11 a.m., daily patrons using the smoking area at the rear of the premises shall not be permitted to take drinks or glass containers with them. Does that mean that up to 11 o'clock, are the patrons allowed to drink in the smoking area? Or is the smoking area making reference to the terrace? Well, I think I understand the answer, but perhaps you can clarify, Mr. Earl, please. Yes, um, the, the terrace is, is used until 11 p.m. and people would be able to take their drinks into the smoking area with them. Um, after 11 p.m., we're not going to let people take drinks into the smoking area because we want to discourage people dwelling in the smoking area and that is going to be incorporated into the design and also the way it's managed. Perhaps it'll be helpful okay. if we refer to what we've been calling the terrace, if we just refer to it as the extension, then I think that helps create a picture of enclosure which terrace doesn't necessarily do. So we, we got the restaurant, okay. we'll have the extension, and we got the smoking area. So if we stick with those three designations, that will probably help us out. Um, counts, uh, any, so, sorry, have you finished? No, the, I'm still sorry. Oh, please Michael carry on. Says, um, with regards to smoking area, I don't, I don't see the point of, of patrons taking the drinks out up to 11 o'clock. Um, they should, a smoking area should be just go and have a cigarette and then come back. Um, but I don't think they should be allowed to take the drinks with them. Um, taking into consideration that the residents' bedrooms are facing that way. And I've just looked at our mapping system and from the rear of the premises to right at the back, where the smoking area should be, they're, on, they're 25 metres, um, not 50 metres, um, like it was mentioned earlier. Um, so I think 25 metres is quite, yeah, it's quite a short distance for, for residents or to have patrons at the rear of their bedrooms um, smoking and, and drinking and maybe staying there for 15, 20 minutes um, instead of just going outside quickly and come back. Um, my other concern is, is with regards to, to the planning, as I said earlier, with the planning mission, um, looking at um, the initial planning application, um, and I've discussed this with, with, um, with a consultant that put a representation in for planning permission, um, which had concerns about um, the soundproofing of the property, um, of the premises, of this of this set structure, and also um, with regard to them not having any ventilation because they were not aware that the, this structure has a retractable roof. Um, if I can read the description of the proposal on the planning application, it states the following. Currently a staff car parking area, ideally to be converted to an additional area for guests to use up to 11 p.m. hours. The proposed user intends to util utilise this area alongside his established A4 use. The intention is to build an aluminium glass conservative type of extension where guests can experience socialising primarily under the sunlight instead of being confined with, within four brick walls as per existing use. The proposer intends to use professional companies to build this area. Current use of the area is only staff car park. So, as I said, when I've discussed this with the planning team, I couldn't find any information submitted to the planning team with regards to the retractable roof, as they had concerns about the soundproofing of this building. Um, this is so, okay, I'm, I'm, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Olford, I've got, I've, I've noted your hand, and I will, of course, call you to ask to ask questions. So, I mean, I am slightly, I'm slightly concerned in the sense that much of what you're saying could have been presented as questions to Mr. Elford earlier, uh, as opposed to, you know, expressions of concern. Uh, but we can pick up these points, I think, backwards and forwards. Well, it counts as um, you can hear amplifications of an existing representation, but this is all new material. I, I am, I, 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 I'm, Mr. Elford, I'm, I'm aware that I, I'd like to draw 
Mimi, if I can draw your attention back to the fact that whatever was in the existing application has been updated by further documents, but the panel is aware of, as I understand it, agreement by the applicant to limit access to the smoking area with drinks to 10 o'clock, to limit the open roof to 10 o'clock, and they're not to be drinking in the smoking area after 10 and for the smoking area to be closed after 11. Now, as I understand it, Mr. Elford, that, though, is that not what you've agreed? No. So what we've agreed is that we will have a limited number of people in the smoking area after 11 p.m. They won't be able to take drinks with them into the smoking area after 11 p.m. And councillors, if you if you felt it was a necessary evil to stop people taking drinks into the smoking area earlier, I'm sure we could live with that. We want to cease the use of the extension, I think that's the correct vernacular now, uh, at 11 p.m., not 10 p.m. And the police uh, have seemingly agreed that with the roof closed, this should be absolutely fine. Um, in terms of the smoking area, we need to be able to use it after uh, 11 p.m. because that's our smoking area for our customers. And the whole one of the purposes of moving this smoking area right to the very rear near the train tracks was to take our smokers from underneath the bedrooms of the residents above out the front of the premises and move them as far away as we possibly can whilst they're still being on our property. Now, Mimi, have you finished your representation? Because obviously we're getting a little bit muddled here in terms of who's asking who questions. So um, is your, are you continuing your representation? Just one more point. Um, as I said, I'm, I agree for the... Um, extension is to be used until uh, 10 p.m. I think 11, 11 p.m. would be excessive. And I don't, I understand there's a planning condition with regard of within, uh, planning condition with regard to the soundproofing of the building. Um, but once again, from my point, when I've discussed with planning, they were not aware that this would be a retract of the roof, because in my opinion, as a noise officer, I find it difficult to understand what kind of roof they have in order to, to be soundproofed um, and minimise the the noise, and also as I said, we we haven't had complaints with regards to the smokers being at the front of the premises, which from our research previously um, we established that there are no bedrooms at the front of the premises, and you expect people after eleven o'clock to use the rear of the premises, and that's why we agreed for the front, and now is. There is being asked to, to be changed at the rear of the premises, including taking drinks with them, which for me it, it would give rise to nuisance. Um, even though it's, the applicant might not think 11 o'clock is excessive, but some residents they would like peace and quiet at 10 o'clock. They don't want necessarily want um, patrons to um, be at the rear of the premises. Um, smoking and drinking and standing there instead of going inside the premises. Um, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Elford, over to you for questions. Thanks. Two questions. One, have you got any evidence to support what you're saying in terms of <laughs> complaints, anything like that? I, I can't hear you. I couldn't hear you. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Can you repeat? Do you have any evidence to support your conclusion? Can you hear me? Um, no, this is what I said. I said we haven't received complaints with regards to the smoke. Oh, my screen is frozen. Again. I'm sorry. I'll... And, and you can hear me. Um, can I just, yeah. just about the... We can hardly hear you, Alison. No. Just about the planning application with it. No, you keep and cutting out. Having you... officer here, then I don't think we can actually. Uh... You keep cutting out. We get a few words and then you disappear. 
Chair, um, could we could we ask Alison to write what she's saying in the chat and then you read it out so everybody? Yeah, I think I think we'll have yeah. we will have to do that. Obviously, we we try to avoid using the chat because it's not in the public domain. But I'll put it on the record. Anything that Alison types. So, Alison, if you can type what you were trying to say. Uh, I can see your hand up, Alison, but if you can try that. So I think Alison was trying to make a point about, I think, about the planning aspect. Um, the summary of the planning decision that's in front of us obviously doesn't include the entire application. So I'm not in a position based on that to conclude whether or not the application made reference to the roof being retractable. I can, I can see the conditions around noise, um, but I can't see what the detail of the original application was. Thank you, Deirdre. I don't know if Alison, if you're still there. I think Alison can't actually hear us, Chair. No. So she's written off. Oh, she's written in the chat. No, now, she's Chair. Right. Without seeing the plans and having the planning applicant planning officer present, we can't go into whether planning were aware of the retractable roof. Can I just say this on planning? Two things. One, we're not here to rehash the planning application. We're happy. That the planning application has been made and, it, and is good for what we want to do. If the view is taken by the council's planning department that what we're doing is not in accordance with what we applied for, then the council's planning department can take action against my client uh, for breaching his planning permission. But as far as we are concerned, the planning permission exists for what we are seeking to achieve here. And this is the licensing application, not the planning application. Okay, I'll note that. Uh, Alison is leaving again to come back in again. So if we're, we give another moment, apologies for this. It's not always this bad. It's hardly ever this bad. That's what I meant to say. Okay. Honestly, Councillor, please don't worry. It's far from the worst <laughs> that I've been to, believe me. Chair, I've got um, another licensing hearing at 12 o'clock because they've been split today, haven't they? Because we've got so many. Well, I think I think Cornelia is also attending that. So I don't think I don't think it will go. Uh, is that the one you're on, Cornelia? Actually, one of the one I was going to attend has dropped off. So it will right. be my colleague Misha. I be, I'll communicate with you in the chat if possible, um, PCK. I will just want to clarify something with you because I believe one of the cases has dropped off Ho hold on I'll, I'll send you a message in the in the chat so watch out for a chat message from Cornelia Kerry I think in the unlikely event that somebody's just tuned into the YouTube they must wonder what on earth we're doing
I had terrible trouble with my broadband for a long time. I cracked and got them around to look at it. Changed my life. Changed my life. Isn't that the BT advert that's on TV at the moment about yeah. broadband? And- <laughs> well, it, it, it was it it, ha- it was an open reach. Other other providers are available, obviously, <laughs> but it, it it was an open reach engineer who solved my problems. We still don't have Alison back. Any news from her, Cornelia? This is just joining oh, now, Chair. Just, just joining, joining now. now. Welcome back again, Alison. You can hear can you hear us now? Cornelia, did you get my message on the chat? Okay, Alison, can you hear us? You are on mute. Um, barely. It's still. I'm. I'm. I'm still getting a, a signal that's breaking up. So I think I'm going to have to have to try and log in via my phone or something like that because this is just. Um, I'm, I'm, I do apologise, but it's just not. Yeah, well, it's making it very difficult all. for. Yeah, obviously, the difficulty with you as a key member here is it's quite hard for us to proceed if you're not present. I know. I know that. Yes, um, I, I know. Let me. I will try. By- if you I'll dial have in, to try by phone, so I'll, yeah. I'll go out and come back. And okay. We can hear you much clearer now, though. Yes, carry on. I would carry on. Yeah. But but if you can't hear us, unfortunately, that that rather. Do you believe you can yeah, hear us no, well I, enough I, to? I, yeah, um, I, I I'm not sure. It, it's every now and then. If you um, the 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 um the the picture and the. Uh, audio just either freezes or or is just is just breaking up, and I've absolutely no idea why, uh, unfortunately. Um, but if you want to, ca- I mean, it's, it seems okay at the moment. Okay. So well, let's just carry, on. carry I, on. I know, I know, lawyers. Yeah, very, I, I, I do apologise. Lawyers are very exercised at the moment about what the concept of present at a meeting actually means. Um, but we'll we'll do our best to keep you. Present, uh, Mr. Elford. Insofar as I can remember anything anymore, I believe that the uh, I b- believe that the things were with you still asking questions. Sorry, uh, I, I, I asked the environmental health officer whether she had any evidence, any complaints to support her proposition regarding 11 p.m. She said that she didn't. Um, in, in terms of customers being able to take their drinks with them into the smoking area. This, we we would say, is a a very different smoking area. Uh, And I just asked the environmental health officer whether, in her perspective, there is a big difference between customers taking drinks out onto the street and customers taking drinks out into an enclosed uh, smoking area at the rear of the premises. And just to clarify something that came up, Nobody ever said we were 50 metres from the residence. We said about 15. Okay, can you answer that, those points, please, Mimi? Sorry, I, I couldn't understand the last question. It's just, it keeps breaking up. It's not terrifically important. Just, is there a difference? between customers taking drinks onto the street and customers taking drinks into an enclosed smoking area. Why why is it wrong for customers to take drinks into an enclosed smoking area before 11 p.m.? Can I just clarify with regards to this application? Um, I can't recall and I I should. Um, Are customers at the moment allowed to take drinks at the front of the premises? No, they're not, but that's because it's the street. So when we had the, the 
um, the hearing previously with regards to this um, application, we've discussed about it and we had the concerns that we had, it was with regards to residents having the bedrooms facing the rear of the premises and not the front. And that's why we agreed on, on the smoking area to be out of the front as they would have less impact because this, as we know, this premise has the operating hours are quite late um, um, and that was our concern. Um, my other concern would be with regards to members of staff. I know you mentioned about the CTV would be with, if members of staff are really busy, would they have the time um, to walk all the way at the rear of the premises and ask customers to be quiet or, or monitor how many they are? Okay, you've, you've answered I, the, you, question you're, the question, but yes, yeah, you're not you're not you're not meant to be asking questions. But you had the opportunity to ask Mr. Elford any question you wanted earlier, and you did not do so. And I'm not clear why you didn't ask him any of these questions. Um, and it doesn't make the flow of the meeting easier if if we're answering questions with questions. You know, it's not. The, it, it's not a discussion, it, it's a structured meeting. So if we could try to stick to the structure, that would make it easier, certainly for for me. Apologies. Apologies, only because, it, it, yeah, like you said. Um, um, as I said, that's that's my explanation with regards to the smoking area. That's why we have um, decided on the, at the front of the premises, because we thought it would have less impact um, on the, on the residents living um, above the premises. Okay, any more questions for Stralford? No, none from me, Chair. Thanks. Councillor Sumner, you want to go first this time? Um, I'm, I'm okay, Chair. I, I will have things to say in our private meeting. Okay, thank you. Councillor Costigan? Yeah, um, just to um, check on this, Mimi. So uh, I, I know I don't know what counts um, what Mr. Alford uh, and um, the applicant's opinion would be on this, but uh, if there was a reduced uh, limit on people in the smoking area and you couldn't take drinks out after ten o'clock, how would you feel about that? Would that go some way to um, assuaging your concerns about this application? So say it was reduced to, I've just picked this six rather than 10 and you couldn't bring drinks out after 10 o'clock. Would you feel less concerned? Um, with regards to the, to the number, um, I would, yeah, I would be happy. I would be happy as as the initial application that we had um, less customers or smokers um, using the um, that area. My concern is still with regards to I don't understand why smokers have to take drinks outside. Um, it, it, it's smoking. It's it's not well. It's, I understand it's for socialising, but if you have a group of let's say five, six friends and they're all smokers and they go there and they stay for half an hour because they enjoy it, have a drink and a cigarette and then they might go in and have, because there will be no, they, they're they not able to restrict the, the same customers going back and forth and just stand there at the rear um, and, and be less, more noisy and uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, and I understand because uh, that terrace would be open and it might not make sense. But yeah, just um, it, it's for me. It's just the drinking. I don't understand why smoking and drinking should be together. Thanks, thanks, Mimi. Okay, thank you. So, uh, so Mimi, I'm going to ask essentially the same question I asked PC Smart, the same order, which is uh, to get myself an understanding. And I want for this purpose, let us work on the assumption that. Um, building con that planning and building control consider that the retractable roof meets noise conditions okay let us work on that if, if it doesn't meet noise conditions then that can be can and would be dealt with in, in other ways let us assume but let us for the sake of my question assume that retractable roof meets the noise conditions specified in the planning permission so uh, from your point of view, for the extension, um, what is reasonable for the roof being open? What is reasonable for the roof being closed? 
I think you've given us a sense of your view about the smoking area, but I just want to be clear about your view about the extension. So with regards to the extension, I'm happy, well, we'll assume that the, they will meet the, the soundproofing, um, the sound insulation required by, by planning, um, even though I still have concerns with regards to that. But let's say if they meet that requirement, then it, it, it doesn't really matter because it would be considered to, have, to be a structure as it, uh, itself. Does it make sense? It's not, it's not going to be a retractable roof if it meets the, 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 the planning permission. Um, and yeah, I would happily um, agree to that. It's, it's fine as long as it meets the, the, the planning requirements. Hey. It's, it's just yeah. It, it, it's a bit it's a bit difficult to comment when I know other aspects of it, and I I understand with regards to the to the mitigation measures that would be in place. I find it difficult to understand how is that going to be. But let's stick to if yeah that they will they will stick to the to the planning requirements. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. That's the end of the representations. At this point, it's my job to seek to confirm any conditions offered or agreed during the discussions. Um, I'll have a go. Um, so my view, my memory, Mr. Elford, is that you put it to us that although your preference in the application is clearly that uh, drinks could be consumed in the smoking area until 11 o'clock, that if the panel felt it were a necessary change, that you could live with, the applicant could live with an earlier deadline for that of perhaps 10. Am I, uh, am I traducing you in presenting it thus? Yes, I, I think that's fair and that would make sense. At, at, at 10 o'clock, with the roof being closed, we'd be happy to stop customers taking drinks into that tiny smoking area. And before you meet, oh, the, just to follow up, um, the bit perhaps we didn't explore, or I don't remember your response to as well, was be about the numbers in the smoking area, as well as the uh, hours of operation with and without drinks. So Councillor Costigan um, po posited the notion that it might be fewer than 10, for example. Yes, um, the number 10 actually came from those making objections. It never came from us. Right. Uh, look, it's a very small area. I, I, I actually think 10 people would be pushing it. Um, but the problem with conditions is that you put a condition onto a premises license, what it becomes is a criminal offence if we breach it. Um, and in that regard, sometimes less is more, um, which is why we have this concern about drinks being taken into the smoking area, because if someone, we would actively monitor it after, monitor it after 11 p.m. or 10 p.m. now, but before that, you know, if someone walks into the smoking area with a glass, we've committed a criminal offence. Um, and we, we don't want to be put in that position. Um, in terms of the numbers in the smoking area, if it was felt appropriate and proportionate to bring that number down, um, then that, that's, you know, that, that's fine with us. We previously had five outside the front of the premises, but I must add that was a much smaller area and it was yeah. much, much more difficult to control because it was on the street adjacent to passers-by this is not on the street no passers-by um so look i mean our capacity is very small anyway 10 percent of capacity is a, a useful rough guide for smoking areas capacity is going to be 95 if, if we said eight after 10 p.m that would probably be suitable for us but of course it's as the committee are minded to to, to to do really okay thank you um i don't recall any other significant conditions offered or agreed so 
if we can move on on that basis. Uh, so I now ask the responsible authorities to sum up, starting with uh, PC Smart. Hi, Chair, thank you. Um, yeah, basically, it's just in relation to um, the enclosed area, but I believe from reading the um, additional information that I was provided with today, um, the police believe it's proportionate with the hours that have been um, submitted within the application. Initially, we, we said 11, um, 10 o'clock across the board, but having read the uh, email that was sent by Mr. Elford, the police believe it's proportionate that the enclosed area closes at 10 o'clock with the roof shut um, and obviously going on till 11 p.m. Um, otherwise, we're happy with the application with the additional conditions that were agreed with PC Hewitton. Thank you. And uh, Mimi Stupu? Thank you, Chair. It's, it's quite tricky because, as I said earlier, I have no concerns if 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 the structure is going to meet the planning um, application requirement, and I assume that the applicant is going to submit a report with regards to to the soundproofing of this um, property. Um, if that's going to be complied with, then I have no concerns with regards to this. Um, I still have concerns with regards to the smoking area being located at the rear of the premises. Um, as I said earlier, we've agreed on, on previously on this to be at the front of the premises. The reason why, um, because there are other, other premises around and it's a busy area and we wouldn't disturb residents as such. I understand it's, it's quite a busy area, and that, but it wouldn't have an impact on the residents living above as the bedrooms are not facing, facing that way. Um, and uh, I can't ask any questions, but I would make a point about the, the number of smokers before 10 p.m. It was mentioned earlier that they might restrict it to eight um, after 10. My concern would be how many would they be before 10? But that's it's just it's not a question. It's just it's a point to make with regards to the smoking area. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Elford, finally, to briefly sum up. Yes, um, I said in my case summary that this was a, a pretty straightforward application. It seems to have turned into something anything but. Um, and, and I think a, a lot of that has been down to the misunderstandings about the application and, and what was being proposed. This is an enclosed, the, the, um, the extension is an enclosed area and we would like to be able to use that until 11 p.m. We will close the roof of the extension at 10 p.m. We will ensure that a suitable number of smokers are able to use the smoking area after 10 p.m. Uh, and various numbers have been bounced around. Um, I have to say that it's very rare that I've seen representation based on so much what if and speculation without any supporting evidence. No residents have, have objected to this application. And I just think it is worth members uh, noting, uh, where is it, forgive me. Noting paragraph 9.14 of the section 182 guidance in respect of uh, people making representations on behalf of others who could sensibly object to the application themselves if they thought they had cause to. Look, this is a very well put together application on a very small premises with a license that already contains bundles of conditions to promote the licensing objectives. Um, we hope that we've done it justice and, and explained to you. And I, I, I just return back to the, the comment I left you with at the end of my original presentation, which is if we can run a premises with no problems until 2.30 in the morning, and you've heard that there have been no problems, why would we not be able to do that in respect of this new area that we're applying for now? Thank you, councillors. Thank you very much. Thank you to everybody 
for participating and sorry for the technical glitches which have slowed us up at various points. Um, so we'll now retire, the panel will retire to deliberate together with the legal advisor and the... Uh, Chair, just before... Uh, we do sorry, that. so someone. Yes, just before we do that, um, there's one paper in my pack that we haven't dealt with yet, which is the amount outstanding. And as uh, Miss Francis is in the uh, um, in, in the meeting, uh, there's a, there's an amount. Should we request what's happening with this amount that's still outstanding to the authority, even after two reminders? Thank you, Chair. Thank Chair, that you. won't be relevant to your determination of of this application. Okay, that's the legal advisor's advice. So we will we will recommence. Um, I'm going to. Well, it's now twelve minutes past twelve. I'm going to uh, say uh, we say twelve forty five. Um, but I don't, of course, guarantee that we'll be ready with a, a decision by twelve forty five. But um, Cornelia can perhaps update you if that won't be possible. Um, and obviously, we'll deliver the decision at that point um, if if we're available to do so. Uh, PC Smart, I'm aware you've got you may have other duties. Yeah, sorry, I've got another hearing at twelve o'clock, so I, I won't be able to come back for the decision, but I'll get it Fine. off someone else. So just so well, that it's just courtesy to let you know that I won't be coming back for the decision. No, thank you for that. We'll ensure that there'll be um, we can email to to let you know um, what's happened. OK, so if I can ask those who are not um, the members of the panel, the legal advisor and the democratic services clerk to leave the meeting now, please.